Hey everyone, welcome back to DIY Biotech. As promised, today we're making the lactase enzyme. So in the last lactose testing video that I did a couple weeks ago, I promised that we'd be making the lactase enzyme and we've done it. It, it works well and it's a really simple procedure. So originally this video was inspired by a Nile Red video that I saw several months ago. He was making lactose free milk, which is interesting. And he used a lactase enzyme product and the ingredient in that product was K-lactis is, is what it said. Now K-lactis stands for Cluveromyces lactis. It's a species of yeast that is found in the cheese making industry. It's originally isolated from the cheese making industry. It's a strain that you can buy online uh, and it produces just excessive amounts of lactase enzyme because that's the environment it lives in. That's the carbon source that it feeds on is lactose. So it has to have an efficient way to break down that lactose into glucose and galactose into those monosaccharides that I can use for its growth. The lab that I work in where I'm doing my PhD research, we actually use a strain called Cluveromyces marxianus which is a very close relative to Cluveromyces lactis. Cluveromyces marxianus has some advantages such as growing at higher temperatures than most organisms. And it also has a really rapid growth rate about as fast as E. coli, which is really fast, you know, doubling time of an hour or something along those lines. Uh, but Cluveromyces lactis is, is more conventional. It does take a couple days to reach exponential growth uh, and it does grow at, you know, ambient temperatures about 30 degrees C, a little higher than ambient. So I have some previous videos where I've been playing with the Cluveromyces lactis organism, where I made the Viking protein beer, the, the blonde, uh, and that worked out really well and, and was able to break down all of the lactose in milk. So I knew that I had a strain that was producing this lactase enzyme. But the sort of limiting step in this procedure was actually busting the cells open in order to get to the lactase enzyme. So fungi and you know yeast are a, are a subset of fungi are, are made of these chitinaceous cell walls. They have cell walls made of chitin, which are, are really difficult to break. Uh, similar to a plant cell wall, it's, you know, it's made out of a different compound, but chitin is uh, difficult to bust open. Uh, and so developing a method to get to the lactase enzyme was sort of the, the limiting step that uh, I overcame in this process. So generally in a professional lab setting, you would use chemicals or a, a physical means to lyse fungal cells or, or yeast cells. Uh, I think chemical methods are the most commonly used uh, procedure. However, you know, this is potentially a food safe product and so I didn't want to use any chemical methods. The second most common procedure is to use glass beads in a glass container and then vortex them for you know a minute or, or something along those lines. I don't have glass beads and I don't have a vortexer, so I couldn't use that method. I tried to substitute this physical lysing with a mortar and pestle. I bought a little cute mortar and pestle online and I tried extracting the cells from the media and crushing it in the mortar and pestle, uh, but this did not yield good results. And so for this experiment that you see now, I was testing two different methods, one of which I had promising results already and I wanted to confirm, and the other one was a simpler method uh, that I wanted to see if it, it, it worked since it was simpler. So the four tests that you see here, we have a positive control, which is lactate, and a name brand lactase enzyme. So that should uh, be giving us a glucose signal on these glucose test strips because the lactose is being broken down into glucose and galactose. So we should get a signal. So that means that's our positive control. Next, we have our test, which I'm calling freeze drying. I'll talk about how I do this procedure in a second, but I've done it before and it worked. And so here we're going to try it again to confirm our results. The next column is just simple freezing. So just putting the, putting the pelleted cells into the freezer and then using that on milk and seeing if it breaks down lactose. And then finally we have our negative control. So this was just the cells put in the refrigerator, you know, refrigerating the cells shouldn't lice them open. And so here we should not be getting a signal. That's what we would expect. So after testing each of these samples at the one minute, five minute and 20 ish minute mark, I got a little bit distracted at the end. Uh, you can see that we clearly have uh, positive results in the positive control. That's a good thing. Negative results in the negative control on the far right. That's a good thing. And then, 
Uh, second from the furthest left is our freeze-dried sample, and that looks like it worked as well as the name brand lactase enzyme. So this is fantastic. Uh, we've confirmed that this method works. Uh, however, the simple freezing method does not work. So the procedure that I used for preparing the lactase enzyme is really simple. Uh, it maybe requires about $100 in supplies and materials if you don't already have them. Uh, but you do need a pipette and a centrifuge to do this. Uh, the centrifuge was only like $30 or $40 from Amazon. It, it's, it's pretty cheap. So first I grew the Cleveromyces lactis on milk. So I wanted to grow it in a, in a situation where it has lactose present. And so that gene is turned on because, you know, to preserve energy, the cell isn't going to express genes that it doesn't need. And so the lactase gene is only expressed when there's lactose present, at least ideally. And so we need to grow this on milk that, of course, contains lactose so that the cells are express expressing the lactase gene. So I grew the Cleveromyces on the milk for about 48 hours uh, in, a, in a flask with a stir bar. If you have a shaking incubator, that would be even better. Uh, but you know, you could even do this without stirring and you know, it might take a little bit longer to grow. But anyway, once the culture was grown and it, and it smelled like there was something fermenting, you can take samples of this, put them in centrifuge tubes and spin it down in the centrifuge. And this is a process called pelleting. So all of the solids that are in the media are going to get flung to the bottom of the tube and we'll be left with a pellet of sort of dirty cells at the bottom of our tube. The liquid at the top of the cells is called the supernatant. This is just going to be milk. You can pour that off, throw that away, and then you can wash it. So the washing procedure means you add something, in this case water, resuspend the cells. So you pipette up and down to uh, get the cells resuspended in the solution. And then you spin it again in the centrifuge to pellet it again. And this seems sort of useless because didn't we just already do this? But you know, when it comes out of centrifuge, you'll see that the supernatant is still pretty cloudy. It still looks pretty milky. So you'll want to pour that off again. Again, we're keeping our cell pellet at the bottom of the tube. You'll want to wash it again with water, pipette up and down, get those cells all the way resuspended, spin it again in the centrifuge, and you'll notice this time the supernatant is much more clear. I found two or three washes was usually sufficient to wash away any milk residues. If you want to produce a lot more of this lactase enzyme, what you can do is put the milk in the centrifuge tube, spin it down, pour off the supernatant, add more of your K-lactis culture, spin it down again, pour off the supernatant, add more of your K-lactis culture. And so you can end up concentrating, you know, a relatively large volume in a short amount of time, even with only six centrifuge slots, uh, you know, you can easily be concentrating like 50 milliliters of culture. Uh, and then you can, of course, just combine all of the pellets into one tube and then proceed with this next step. So the next step is to resuspend the pellets with as little water as possible. Uh, for about 500 microliters of pelleted cells, I can add about 100 microliters of water pretty safely uh, to resuspend into sort of a, not quite a, a slurry, but it's a little bit more viscous than water. Then you can take this solution of really, really concentrated cells and spread it out thin on a glass slide or similar really flat, smooth surface. And what you'll want to do is just leave this out. It only takes about 30 minutes, depending on how much water you use, uh, to completely dry out. Uh, it dries out much quicker than you would expect. Again, about 30 minutes is, is all it took for me. Once the glass slide is dry, you can stick it in your freezer. I recommend at least overnight. And then the following day, or, or once it's done in the freezer, you can use a uh, razor blade or, or similar tool to scrape off the film, and you have a, a nice freeze-dried, sort of freeze-dried powder of uh, Cluveromyces lactis cells mixed in with your lactase enzyme. So this powder-ish stuff is what I used for the uh, experiment to test if this is active. So although this isn't a pure enzyme, it still has an amount of activity. And enzyme activity units are a strange thing. If, if you look at any enzyme product online, even lactase pills, you know, it says something like uh, units of enzyme. 
and every company can just completely invent uh, what a unit of enzyme is. Usually it has something to do with, you know, how much of the reactant is broken down in an amount of time uh, with a certain amount of enzyme. And that, uh, that amount of enzyme is then the unit. Uh, but, you know, manufacturers could make up tests in different scenarios, different concentrations of substrates, different concentrations of enzymes in different conditions at different temperatures. You know, there's a million variables that you can tr tweak in order to make your enzyme activity sound uh, larger. So that's the procedure. That's how I made the lactase enzyme. And if you go back to the Nile Red video, you'll see that uh, it's whole cell Cluveromyces lactis. In that product that he used for the lactose-free milk, uh, the ingredient was whole cell isolate from Cluveromyces lactis. So we've essentially made what that product was here. And there may have been some other things added and some other steps done to ensure there's no more live culture. Uh, but this strain is food safe. It's, uh, you know, considered safe by the FDA to consume. It's used in the cheese making industry. That being said though, I do not recommend eating this. If you wanna do this to learn the skills of molecular biology, please do. Uh, if you just wanna learn from watching this video, that's great too. Uh, but do not, I do not recommend you actually ingest this. I, I wouldn't, it's not worth it. Just go buy the lactase pills. So anyway, that's it. That's all I have for today. That's how I made a lactase enzyme at home. Uh, if you learned something or you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. This is DIY Biotech. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.